A giant whale won't leave a diver alone. And she then realizes he is trying to tell her something. Despite their immense size. Whales are among the most mysterious and least understood creatures on Earth. In the South Pacific's Cook Islands. A tense encounter between a seasoned marine biologist. And a humpback whale serves to demonstrate. Just how much we have yet to learn about these gentle giants. This incident has sent shockwaves throughout the scientific community. Nan Hauser is a 63-year-old marine biologist. Who has dedicated her life to studying, researching. And helping whales. Born in Maine. She has traveled across the globe. For the past three decades on a mission to document. And save as many whales as possible. By advocating for their rights and protection. It was late summer when Nan was swimming off the shore of Rarotonga. Accompanied by a research vessel. And watched by her colleagues. Who were tracking her course visually and with a drone. Using a waterproof camera. Nan was documenting her swim near a small pod of humpback whales. As she was filming. A large male humpback whale. Likely weighing over 23 tons and measuring at least 50 feet in length. Began to swim toward her. Usually, when swimming with whales. Nan would be the one approaching the animal to observe its behavior. However, this time was different. The huge animal was rushing at her. And as it got closer. She realized she wouldn't be able to get out of its path. If anyone could be considered an expert on swimming with whales. It's Nan. It's a significant part of her work. And she has done it hundreds. If not thousands. Of times throughout her career as a conservationist and marine biologist. When she was bewildered by the whale's behavior. She knew she was in trouble. The closer the whale got. The clearer it became that something was wrong. As Nan tried to get away, the whale continued to ram into her, pushing her farther from the boat. A moderate hit from a humpback whale had the potential to break bones and damage her internal organs. This was a serious threat if the whale continued its behavior. While Nan was being pushed by the whale's head, she knew that one wrong movement could put her in range of its more dangerous and muscular appendages such as its flippers. Humpbacks are not known for aggressive behavior. But they are powerful animals. Even a single unintended hit from a flipper or tail could knock Nan unconscious and lead her to drown. Staying close to the whale's head was likely the safest area. Considering humpback whales don't have teeth, but rather sheets of soft baleen in their mouths. Humpbacks are usually calm and relaxed creatures. But being pushed by the whale left Nan bruised. The whale had been pushing her for over 10 minutes. And the rough barnacles on its skin were scraping her body. Whenever it touched her. Nan realized the whale's reasoning. She could see what was causing the whale's unusual behavior. And understood that she was in a life-threatening situation. Near the second whale. Nan could finally see what was making it lash out with its tail, a tiger shark. Known as a man-eating shark. Tiger sharks are dangerous predators. And this one was larger than average. Measuring over 15 feet in length. Nan realized that the whales weren't attacking her. They were trying to protect her from the dangerous predator. Thankfully. Nan and her dive buddy managed to break away from the whales and reached their boat at the last minute. As Nan pulled herself on board and gasped for air, she informed the crew that a large tiger shark was in the waters around them. Once her pulse calmed down, Nan was far from afraid, she was exhilarated. She understood that the whales were trying to save her, not harm her. As Nan reviewed the footage from the underwater cameras, she theorized that the whale had kept her close to protect her from the nearby shark. This incident marked the first time she had ever heard of, let alone experienced, whales acting in this way with humans. While researchers are familiar with humpbacks,
helping other animals in dangerous situations. Nan's case was unique. Whales have been known to help other species. But this was the first reported case of them assisting a human being. As Nan's story spread, the scientific community became divided. Some believed her theory, while others thought it was impossible to determine the whale's intentions accurately. Nan's experience remains baffling and strange, underscoring just how much we have to learn about these majestic creatures. For a hunter, hunting animals is like a common thing for him. When he meets a bear, the same is true. The cub of the female bear falls into the water. And the desperate mother bear can only look at the hunter imploringly, hoping that he can save his child. At this time, the mother bear was completely defenseless, which was the best hunting time for hunters. But strangely, the hunter made amazing moves. Bears are one of the scariest predators in Russia. They are very strong, surprisingly fast and very intelligent. Because of this, people living near there are afraid of this animal. If not adventurers, most people hope to stay away from this animal and pray that they will not become their meal. However, meeting a bear has changed the hunter's life in the future. Alexander was a brave and dignified man who lived on the cold plains of Russia and had to protect his land from any possible danger in order to survive. He had a modest house and lived alone. He would fish or hunt animals in the nearby Great Lakes every day. Alexander was a clever hunter, but he also had a difficult opponent to deal with. And that was the bears, who made a loud noise, were large and dangerous, and caused him a lot of losses. These bears often come to pick up the prey he left outside, break furniture, and even steal chairs, tables and the like. Because of this, Alexander hated bears very much and always hunted bears. Of course, not everyone likes bear meat. So it doesn't sell well, but Alexander doesn't care about it. He hunts bears for two main purposes. First, bears can provide him with a rich meal. Second, every bear he hunts means one bear is missing. And his house can become safer. But it is not easy to find bears to hunt, they are easily frightened, and they prefer to move under the cover of night. Which is why Alexander is so upset. One morning, as he was dressing, he suddenly heard a howl full of sorrow from the bear, and was startled because the sound was so close to his house. Alexander felt that this was his lucky day, for it was very unlikely that his prey would come to him during the day. So he rushed into the inner room, unlocked the door, seized his weapon, and quietly opened the window. He put his weapon on the windowsill and aimed at the bear. Everything was too easy, but something stopped him from pulling the trigger. Something was wrong, and the bear seemed to be aware of his presence. But its wailing continued, and it was clear that something had happened. Alexander, cursing his curiosity, laid down his weapon and walked slowly outside. As he went out, the bear came towards him. And Alexander was not afraid of the animal. For the bear did not take radical action at all. And looked at him with sad eyes, almost pleading. And then turned away, looking back at Alexander at every few steps. As if checking whether he was still following himself. Alexander, once more unable to control his curiosity, began to follow the bear carefully. And he knew how dangerous he was now behaving. But the bear did not seem to be annoyed at his presence. But showed the appearance of needing him. Soon, Alexander figured out why the bear approached his house. And asked for help. Far away, a few meters from the lake. A bear cub is struggling. It tries to get its head out of the water, but it will soon sink. Alexander watched the great bear he had just followed slowly away from him as if to get him over to help its cubs. Alexander could hardly believe that the bear would ask him for help, because his cub was in danger. And the mother bear seemed to know that the humans, who lived in the cabin could help his child. Alexander paused for a moment and weighed his choices. 
He never liked bears, and the trouble and destruction they caused cost him a lot. And a lot of money was spent in vain. For many years, people often heard that. People were injured or died because of bears. But on the other hand, how can he refuse a mother's request to save her child? The hatred of the bear in his heart kept telling him what to do. But the mother bear's cry made him unable to ignore it. Alexander knew what he had to do. He rushed into the lake. And the cub struggled wildly to splash. Alexander tried to carry the baby bear out. But he was hindered. He noticed something wrapped around his legs. And soon he discovered that. It was a fishing net he had thrown into the water a few days ago. Alexander reached into his pocket, pulled out the knife he had carried with him, and at last found it and pulled it out. He cut the net that entangled the poor cub and finally saved him. Alexander fished the baby bear out of the water. And when he returned to the shore, he put his coat over the baby bear again. And then began to touch it in order to warm it up. And coughed up the water it had drunk. The mother bear kept a safe distance and watched keenly. But never approached, as if she didn't want to scare Alexander. The thought passed through Alexander's mind. Although the situation was dangerous, he did not feel afraid. After a few tense minutes, the cub coughed and water flowed out of his mouth. After a few more minutes, he finally stood up. It shook off Alexander's coat and looked at him carefully. It made a slight sound. Then, the baby bear returned to his mother. At this time, the mother bear finally let go of her heart and howled happily. She licked the cub curled up on the river bank, trying to dry it. Hoping to keep it warm. All Alexander could do was sit by and watch. And he watched the mother bear take care of the injured cub. And all he could think about was his own mother. And he saw himself in the cub. When he thought of the mother's concern for him in his childhood. An adventurous person always has a good time. But he can get into trouble. But he still needs his mother's love and support at the end of the day. At this moment, Alexander felt that something had changed in his heart. He no longer regarded bears as dangerous animals. He didn't think there were any creatures worth fearing or killing. All he saw was a family trying to live its own life. They loved each other and supported each other. Suddenly he felt a sense of guilt. And he imagined how many bear families had been destroyed by his hunting. And he dared not think about it. When he swallowed the acidity in his throat. He found that his tears had flowed out of the corner of his eye. He vowed never to hurt the bear again for the rest of his life. Which was an oath he kept. This encounter with mother bear changed Alexander a lot. He bought a lot of land near his home, built a fence around it. Marked the boundary, and made a lot of efforts to ensure that. The bears living in the forest lived a safe and peaceful life. He even made sure to put away the fishing nets. After each trip, he would go to the lake. It took quite a bit of time and effort. But if it saved a bear, or if her cubs weren't entangled in them. Then it was all worth it. To his great surprise, the number of bears in the land he bought exploded. People used to visit his hut and ask to see the natural state and habitat of animals. Alexander was happy that they came to see the bear. Certainly from a safe distance. But one thing Alexander never got rid of was his weapons. The good news was that he no longer used them to hunt bears. Instead, he used them to scare away hunters in this land. Under his protection, every few weeks the mother bear. And her baby would come and sit opposite the hut. As if to thank Alexander for all he had done for them.